He is doing exactly what I want to be doing with Life with Justin, with my podcast. And I'm going to go to the uh, Zoom meeting that I'm on, but he's streaming to all the platforms simultaneously. So I'm going to share my screen. Once you're in the room, can you connect? Meaning, can you warm a person up to the idea that by step three, you can actually go out and close that person? It's funny, we have now hundreds and uh, uh, getting over a thousand members that have gone through Black Card. And uh, I've been able to talk to a lot of people in our groups, communities that are launching launch investment funds. funds. And it's funny, always the question comes up, Bridger, how do I raise capital? How do I get more investors? And you know, I'm struggling so much and I always pause and say, well, what are you struggling with? Raising capital is a big bubble, it's huge. And I always get down and I ask him, okay, are you struggling with step number one? Like, are you even getting around enough of people that are wealthy? Or is it, okay, I know a lot of people that are wealthy. I just don't know how to warm them up to the idea that I could be someone that they could invest with. That's stage number two. Or maybe, hey, you're getting ton, around a ton of great people. They're actually liking you. They want to hear your pitch, but at your pitch, maybe they're not, not investing. Those, Those are three crazy. distinct different problems within your funnel. Does that make sense? So today I want to talk through these three stages of raising capital specifically do step number one, work, you know, getting in the room, getting around people that have money. Does that sound like a good plan? Give me a yes in the chat if that's good. We are live today, by the way, so welcome in, y'all. I'm, I'm calling in from Salt Lake City, Utah, in our studio. Um, it's good to see everybody. What's up? Give me a yes in the chat. We might do some giveaways today. We'll have a little bit of fun. Um, we are live, by the way, on Zoom. We've got TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, Facebook. We're across the board. Um, so we'll have different chats from different places. So just in case I'm answering a question on one chat, you might not see another chat. I love the yeses though. Welcome on you guys. We got a few hundred people live um, with us already, which is awesome. Uh, okay, real quick, actually, I wanna, in the chat, if you can type in what type of industry you would like to launch a fund in or you're already running a fund in. So if you're, so either way, whether you, maybe you're in the beginning stages, that's totally fine, or you're already launched, maybe it's real estate, private equity, hedge funds, you know, debt funds, venture capital funds, type in the chat and maybe give me specific, hey, I'm doing a hedge fund in, you know, with Forex trading, or I'm doing private equity for baby boomer businesses. I'm doing a venture capital for seed stage startups. Give me a little, just give me one sentence on what you're doing. And that's, I think it's pretty cool to hear what you guys are, what y'all are doing. So type that in the chat for me. Okay, really cool. Wow, I love these. These are coming in. Um, these are awesome. I got to look through my cameras here to read the chat. Though. I got a screen right behind my cameras. Hedge fund, doing AI, cool. Multifamily, real estate, awesome. Doing a security fund, wow, really cool. Medical fund, building medical facilities, real estate, single family homes, short-term rentals, sports, gambling. Wow, this is awesome. Crypto, really cool. So just so, keep typing in the chat, by the way, just so you're aware of who you're talking, if you guys haven't seen before. So I currently run a crypto hedge fund. We can talk about crypto if you want to today. Today's specifically around uh, raising capital, but uh, so our fund just hit 25 million in, uh, in assets. And that's all equity, by the way. We don't have any debt in our fund. It's just equity. 25 million assets. Um, this morning, I think, or last night, we hit it. Um, is exactly the market just took off all time highs yesterday with crypto. With uh, we are raising right now on average about a million dollars per month um, is our so current kind of raise. Uh, this month, though, we've already got around 1.4, 1.5 million points. Um, we're hoping to be over two million this month. Our fund, the way our fund runs, just so you're aware, is right it's open ended. So we can raise money. At the end of every month, we do a closing. We have investors come at the end of the month. So that's how we track it is how much we're raising per month. A lot of you are going to go out and raise um, different types of funds, et cetera. So, by the way, this is my third fund that I've ran. I two debt funds prior. I currently run this fund. We just launched fund launch partners as well, which is a GP state fund. We're raising money for that as well. So, I'm, I'm currently in the game. I am currently I talking to investors every single day. We, I run through pitches. I'm running for this stuff. So him. give you a sense of I'm doing this every single and day. Stream it as um, well. Now, what's fun is uh, if you go to my, my iPad audience. again, 
So we're going to, let's dive in actually and talk today I'm about this right here. Not Step trainer. one, how do I actually so I get in the room now? I'll zoom back a little bit at Fun training. Launch Live. This we're going to be going in depth into all of these different Starting frameworks. This is fun. brand new material that you guys have never heard before. It should be very fun. Um, we're going to design this. This is kind of chicken scra scratch version. Um, actually, over here is the chicken scratch version. We made it a little bit more formal. Whatever. We're going to make it really pretty and nice for uh, Fun Launch Live. By the way, we are 38 days out from Fun Launch Live, which is pretty fun. Um, so you if you guys want to grab tickets, funlaunchlive.com. We're 37, it's gonna be 37 days. This is our third event. It's going to be in Orlando, Florida. You go to funlaunchlive.com. You can grab tickets. We got we had Ed Milet last year, which was really fun. We got an incredible lineup this year of speakers and everything. It should be a, a really fun time. So, so this down is here, what we got Steve Eisman coming. My, we'll myself, Warren Clapp, talking like, all about one of the best cap raises on earth. My dad, John Payton, talking about macroeconomics, the U.S. dollar, international trade, petrodollar, Todd Buckholtz. Um, he's managing for a Tiger Fund, formerly a Harvard professor. We got Cody Sanchez, which is coming, which is so cool. We got Cody, Peter Zihan, one of my favorite authors of all time on macroeconomics. Ben Hardy wrote 10X is easier than 2X, incredible author. Neil Bawa, I mean, good on this. Uh, Andrew Smith, Ben Reinberg, Bryce Sutton, Bob Frazier, Jeremiah Butcher. I mean, it's cool that you guys can go through and read all these bios. We got a pretty fun lineup. Um, and this is a different event than all of our events. Um, this is an event where we go deep on like launching a fund. It's not just a conference. It's like an actual like experience of walking through the process of building and launching a fund. So 37 days away, it should be pretty fun. Um, good to see you guys. So if you guys want to grab tickets, funlaunchlive.com. We are live right now for tickets. You have to apply for VIP, but general mission tickets are, are live. We have sold out the last two events. We're looking to sell out this event as well, third event. So it should be pretty fun. All right, so you guys ready to dive in? Now in the chat for me, type in how much capital have you raised to date? Just in, in any business, anything you've ever done. I'm curious how much you have capital have you raised in the chat? And I'm going to pull up my, my iPad here and we're going to go quick. So type in the chat how much capital you've raised in the past. Give me a sense of who's on the call today. Um, there we go. So 250 million, 175,000, zero. No, hey, if you've raised zero, no problem with that either. That's totally fine. We all, everyone starts somewhere. And by the way, raising your first dollar is the hardest dollar to raise, by the way. Raising your first dollar is the hardest dollar to raise. Some people are 10 million. 20 million, 5 million, 100,000, 50,000, 200,000. Okay, it gives me a good sense. So all across the board, the stuff I'm going to talk about today works regardless of what we're talking about. I want to share frameworks that work regardless of everything. So um, I'll tell you a quick story. So, and go back to my iPad for a second. So today, what I've seen a lot of people struggle with is Bridger. How do I actually get in the room? How do I get around people that are wealthy? Where are these people that are wealthy? Do I have to come up with a new funnel, a new strategy? Do I need to have a cool CRM or some ads? Like what, what do I do to get in the room? We're not, and later we'll talk about warming up the room, connecting, and then hopefully closing. And at Fun Launch Live, we've got Oren Clapp. He's going to talk all about closing. It's going to be really fun to have him there. But today, let's talk all about getting in the room. So um, first thing I'm going to say, wealthy people already hang out together. Wealthy people are already put together. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. Uh, for example, wealthy people, um, I, I didn't realize this for a long time is like when you're going out to raise your first dollar, it's kind of intimidating. Where do I find these people? Where are they? What are they doing? And when I finally realized they're already together, it's like, um, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. You just need to put your hook in the right line of water and the fish are already swimming together. They're already there. We went fishing last year in Alaska and we did a floss detecting to get salmon. The fish are already swimming these lanes. They're already pooled together. You just have to put your line in the right place in the water and you can catch a ton. We actually caught a ton of salmon. We brought it home. We cooked it up. I put it in my Traeger. It was awesome. Okay. So that's what uh, we're talking about. So for example, I'm going to give you a, a few pools where people are already hanging out. Number one, if you go back to my iPad here, I'll draw some out for you. And I'll actually, I'll look them up for you. They're already hanging out in what are called angel groups. You can go to any city in the country, any um, relatively sized metropolitan area, there will be an angel group. I'm in Utah for crying out loud. Utah is a pretty small market compared to other markets. We have, for example, the Salt Lake City Angels. We have the Park City Angels. We have the Tribe Angels. Yeah, we have at least, there's probably more, but at least three groups that I know of and, and I know the people in there. Three angel groups. What are angel groups? Angel groups are similar to like a shark tank. It's like shark tank. They meet usually once a month or a quarter. There's, I don't know, most of these I've seen as 40 to 50 people that are all accredited investors that like investing into startups. They meet together and they invite 
a handful of companies every single month to come and they are allowed to pitch their offering. And all of these 40 to 50 wealthy investors sit there, they take notes, they ask questions just like Shark Tank, and they will write checks into these groups. These are angel groups. Like we can go right now. I Give me a city. Give me a city in the chat. I'll pull it up right now for you. Just one last time. Let's make a new tab. Let's go. Um, what do you guys got? Angel groups, Dallas, Dallas Texas. Texas. Let's just see what pulls up. Okay, so pitch, we're going to add angel investors. North Texas Angel Network. Bam, right there. Texas investors, Dallas investors. Top 10 angel investors in Dallas. List of Dallas angel investors. I mean, you can go. Let's just go to this first one. North Texas Angel Network. We invest in people providing bright future for early stage companies. They, they get, get together, together and they allow people to come pitch. I mean, let's do another one. What else you guys got? Chicago. That's too easy. These big, all big cities are going to have them. Let's do angel groups of like, let's try Boise. Boise, Idaho. Let's just see if, uh, if Boise has angel groups. Boise Angel Alliance. Look at that. Angel investors in Idaho. Startups. Let's just go to Boise Angel Alliance. Let's try this one. If Boise, Idaho has an Angel Alliance investment fund, pretty much every city will have it. I promise you. <laughs> okay. Go. And then what you, what I like to do at least go meet the people that run these and maybe go to their blog or website, whatever it is. Um, do a little research, find the people that are running these startups and message them on LinkedIn. Hey, I'd love to come. Sometimes they have intake forms. Everyone's going to operate a little bit different, but say, Hey, I'd love to come attend, provide value, you know, be involved with you guys. And also we got this great offering. I'd, I'd love to come in again, get in the room. Back to this. These rooms are already a lot of built. built. Okay. Does that, that make any ahas there? Is that helpful a little bit? So let's keep going. So I'll tell you a quick story. Um, <laughs> this is actually from my dad. So as you guys know, my story, my dad started a, um, Oh, let's put Matt to backstage, by the way. Um, uh, my dad started a, a number of incredible different funds, DECA Billion Dollar Family of Funds, um, and uh, did an incredible job with those. On his very first fund, it's like 2004 or something, something like that. They, um, they launched a fund. They were trying to raise capital. They're doing a hard money lending fund. And now my dad, and as you guys know, my dad's going to be speaking at Fun Launch Live, founder of a DECA Billion Dollar Family of Funds, now retired, incredible dude. Um, when I started my first fund, he, I went and pitched him for money. He said, no, but he said, uh, you need to go raise money on your own. My dad has still never invested a single dollar to a fund I've ever built, but my dad's been an incredible mentor. He's mentored me through launching and scaling multi seven figure funds. It's been incredible to have a great mentor like that, but never invested a dollar, but you know, gave me a lot of value in other places. Also, my brother is an investment funds attorney, formerly at the largest law firm in the, the world for funds. funds. Uh, I've worked on numerous hundred million and, and multi-billion dollar funds as a, an investment attorney. So I have my dad, dad ran a multi-billion dollar fund. My brother's an investment attorney. Myself, I've ran, now so I'm, I'm on my third fund currently, $25 million hedge fund that we currently run. Um, so we've seen a lot with raising capital and doing this. And by the way, none of us went to Ivy League schools. None of us went to Harvard. All of us are just regular entrepreneurs. But we figured out this incredible vehicle of funds. We figured out this beautiful model of what funds are, how to start one, how to build one. And now um, uh, using, if you go scroll my, my iPad, this fund launch formula, we've helped uh, now over, just out of Black Card, 210 funds in the last two years. We've taken them through this process. We'll do this at Fund Launch Live with you guys. We've launched 210 funds have launched just out of our top group, which is called Black Card. That doesn't include all the other, we have over 70,000 students around our whole community. Black Card currently has something like 500 people in it. That's just out of Black Card, which is pretty cool. 210 funds, we've actually filed like form Ds for with the SEC, like we've filed and launched 210 funds. So I've seen a lot of funds, I've seen this happen in a lot of places. So now scrolling back in, again, getting in the room is what we're talking about today. Let me tell you a quick story about my dad. So my dad in their first fund, um, they're, they're there in a small little office and his partner comes to him and says, John, I just bought box seat tickets to the Utah Jazz. We've got four seats and he spent it was something around $35,000 for the season. And my dad is usually very conservative. He's like, he's like, what? Like, what are you talking about? We don't have 35 grand. Like in my part, his part is like, well, hold on. But before you get mad at me, <laughs> he goes, John, we are having a really hard time getting in the room with wealthy investors. He goes, we, we call, call into, into this, this, you know, Mrs. Johnson, Johnson, she's a wealthy CEO in the area. We call into her office. Hey, Mrs. Johnson. Hey, this, you know, my name's Bridger. I'd love to meet with you. 
They have a gatekeeper. There's a receptionist or whoever that says, oh, sorry, Mrs. Johnson's busy. She can't meet with you, blah, blah, blah. And he goes, John, if we call that same executive assistant and say, hey, you know, hey, my name's Bridger, I'm calling in. I just wanted to invite Mrs. Johnson and her husband. Tonight, we've got two tickets. The Jazz are playing the Lakers. We got a dinner beforehand, box seats, private parking. We'd love to invite you guys to come tonight. Are you, or is she available? Because nine times out of 10, that executive assistant is going to pass that message on to this person. He goes, what's happened? What's going to happen is we're going to have them come to the jazz game. We'll be in you or go two of us. And then we'll have the other two. We have dinner beforehand. We have the game. We can talk to them for two to three hours, talk, hang out, get to know them and get in the room and hopefully warm up the room and, and have a chance to close them. But it'll allow us to raise a lot more capital. And my dad said, all right, well, fine. You already paid for the tickets. Like, whatever. And last I checked, I talked to both of them. They told me just from those box seats, they bought four box seats. They did ended up, they ended up doing it for like three seasons. I believe they raised around $75 million just from that one strategy where before they couldn't raise a lot of money, they were raising. Okay. But that really propelled their capital raising. Okay. Um, and so again, getting in the room, people are already in box seats. People are already in the, uh, we'll, we'll, I'll actually, we'll dive into this in a second. So, um, is this helpful, by the way? This is useful. Hopefully this is good. Um, we'll keep going. Share my iPad, Ken. Can you? Let's get into this. So there are two distinct ways to get into any any room. You can work your way in, or you can buy your way in. And you can, you're already kind of looking ahead right here. So there's two distinct ways. I think both are good, by the way. So working your way in, let me, uh, let me go like this. I'll just, so you can definitely see that part of the screen. Actually, I'll just go like this. Okay, work your way in. You can get on LinkedIn. Go to networking groups, real estate media, social media, events. These are great ways to work your way into a room. Uh, you guys can probably give me more examples in the chat if you'd like. Um, well, actually, yeah, yeah, give me some examples of how you worked your way into good rooms. Maybe you've leveraged social media. Maybe you've thrown an event. Maybe you've attended events. Maybe you met somebody and then you had them introduce you to somebody. Then you did a deal for them. You provided a lot of value for somebody. You worked your way into a relationship, whether it was an institution or family office or somebody else. Um, a lot of great ways to work your way in. Another way to get into rooms is you can buy your way into rooms. So I just mentioned box seats, okay? That's one way you can buy your way into a room. That was kind of that story. You also can do a pitch. Okay, this is actually where you can actually pay. We had a group come to us. So quick story, they came and said, hey, we, we assemble all the consulates and family offices from South America. So we have all these family offices from Mexico. We have some from Argentina, Brazil. We'll bring them together. You pay us $12,000 and we allow you to pitch. It's like a hundred different family offices from South America. We're like, huh, okay. I ended up doing it, but a couple guys in our black card community ended up doing that and they went and pitched some great groups and I, I believe raised some awesome money. So there's pay to pitch. Um, another one I put on here was Ferrari Club. Uh, something me and Mason did a few years ago. We bought a supercar, we bought an Audi R8. Um, and it was just for fun and stuff, but what I, I didn't even, this is by just chance. When you buy a supercar, you get in these supercar clubs. People with supercars like to meet other people with supercars. Uh, and most cities, I didn't realize this, have a, just like a angel group, they have a Ferrari club or a Lamborghini club or a Porsche club. Uh, so there's a Ferrari club of Dallas. There's a Ferrari club of Chicago. There's a Ferrari club of Atlanta. And guess what you have to have to be in a Ferrari club? A Ferrari, okay, or a supercar club. And actually, uh, just by chance, I we had this Audi R8. I started going on drives with guys, and we meet up and do little car meets and stuff. Uh, we ended up raising, just by chance, a ton, because we were in the room with great people. Okay, so back to my iPad, if you can. When raising capital, just by chance, this is, I, we had this Audi R8. I started going on drives with guys, and and I'm a big believer in doing stuff. Uh, we ended up raising, just by chance, a ton, because we were in the room with great people, okay? So back to my iPad, if you can. When raising capital,
can read that for me? Logan, okay, yeah, we got Logan. Logan, Logan on Zoom. It was on Zoom call. So Logan on Zoom, congrats. Logan, what you need to do right now, send Adam Smith. He's one of my co-hosts. Send him your email, and we'll send you $100 to Amazon uh, for being on your live today. It was awesome. Um, okay, I love it. Now, let me give you uh, one or two more things that I have done to get in the room. Um, and actually, go back to my iPad for me. Let me do this in blue here. I have seen a ton of of success with events. Now events, sometimes you have to pay. So it's a little bit of a mix of both of these. I think events is like a perfect mix. Events allow you to buy your way. And sometimes there's like VIP or, you know, there's different types of things at events. I attend, by the way, a lot of events. I know we throw Fun Launch Live, which by the way is, what are we? I'll go back to here. We are 37 days away from Fun Launch Live. You guys want to come? But again, you can buy, your, you, you get a ticket to Fun Launch Live. You come, I'm already spending, you know, we've spent last year over a million dollars on Fun Launch Live. I mean, we spend a lot of money. So we're already assembling an incredible room. We're paying all the money, all the speakers, everything that, to pull stuff together. And what happens is you guys can come and you pay a couple hundred bucks and you get a ticket and you get to leverage the room that we've already pulled together. I'll give you an example. Uh, on Thursday, I am going to the Greenwich. You can put on my iPad again. Greenwich Economic Forum. We had to pay, I think it was like something like, I don't know, I can't remember, 15000 or whatever. Yeah, members, now, me and Lincoln are members of the Greenwich Economic Forum. That's where I met Ray Dalio like six months ago. About 200 members. This is, you know, we pay to go to their events, but we're in there with David Rubenstein, all these billionaires, all these huge family offices. Man, that's a good room to be in. And they've already spent the hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars to assemble this room. We, we pay a relatively small price. We join the room and ta-da. We're going to be around all these. We're going to uh, Miami, I think, on Thursday to now do the one of our second events with the Grand Economic Forum, which is kind of cool. Uh, I'll, I'm just, So what I'm telling you, I'm in the game right now. I'm doing this. We are raising over a million dollars a month right now doing this kind of stuff. Events are massive. I'm an event junkie. Last year we went to, I don't can't remember how many events. I speak at some events, and then I go attend events just because it's a great way to leverage rooms that are already built. Another great one is uh, pay-to-play networking. Um, two, let's see, three years ago I joined a group. I'll put it in green here. It was $30,000 for one year. We got three events. That was it. Okay. Three events. I think they did like a live call like once a week. That was a, a Facebook group. Um, 10,000 per event. Now you might say, Bridger, that's a crazy amount of money. Like why would you spend that on, you know, just three events? And I said, well, I look at things from an ROI perspective. If I go to this event, they had about 200 people there. Every single person had also paid 30 grand. So I'm in a room with some pretty cool. Another one the next year for 24,000. They did four events. And I can't remember they had something else with it. Penny. Still, I feel like I got a very positive ROI in that group. The last year, me and Mason joined one. It was $150,000 for one year to join. This is with Russell Brunson's group. It was Category Kings group with him. But guess what's cool? You might say, wow, Bridget, that's just stupid amounts of money. You guys are idiots. Again, I, I'm an investor by trade. I look at things from an ROI perspective. If I can learn something or meet somebody that increases my business revenue by $150,000 or net income by $150,000, then it was worth it. It was a positive ROI. And so uh, last year, we went, uh, and first off, the people in the room also paid hundred fifty grand. It's a good room to be in, first off. Second off, we feel like for over the last year, we got a positive ROI. We, I, I can't remember, we coach, I can't, I'm gonna give you earning claims or anything, but we, we feel like we got a very uh, multi-figure increase on that investment. This, this is, is again, again buying your way and pay to play networking, buying your way into rooms, into better, better rooms. The only difference between, you know, a lot of times, if you, well, maybe I'll zoom out for a second. Like, I'll go over here. For example, like, have you ever seen these people on TV or whatever? Like, like maybe, like, I don't know, you can look at Elon Musk or people like that. And they, they will lose millions of dollars. Right? And you're like, oh my gosh, they crash. And then all of a sudden they're like, they're back, they're a millionaire. But these are even people that are billionaires. They lose, uh, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars. And then within a couple of months or years, they're back to multi-billionaire status. Like, how does that happen? You ever wondered that? You ever met somebody like this? They, oh, they lost everything in 2008. They were a millionaire in 2008. Hit. They lost everything, but now again, they're 
multimillionaires again. Huh. How did that happen? And um, what I've considered at least is one of the biggest debts or biggest expenses we have in life, me and you have, is what I like to call ignorance debt. We pay a lot of money for what we don't know. And often, oftentimes, it's not what we don't know. It's not even that. It's it's the unknowns of the unknown. You guys know what I'm talking about? Give me like a yes in the chat if you know what I'm talking about. The, the unknown of the unknown. Like, I don't even know the questions to ask. Right? Like, I don't even know the un, like the question. You know what I mean? Have you ever felt that? Maybe you feel that way in funds, by the way. It's like, hey, I'd love to do a fund, but I don't even know the questions to start to ask to begin with. To even It's like the unknowns of the unknown. And actually, oftentimes, is very scary. The unknowns, the unknowns can be super scary because you might, you know, join Like, for example, I've never been in this space. Let's just say, like, a, if I was going to go start a pharmaceutical company, I don't even know. I don't even know how to spell pharmaceutical, first off. That, that's a problem. Uh, second off, <laughs> I don't even, like, the unknown, it'd be so scary to develop a pill and work with the FDA and, like, what if I get sued and, like, count? Like, it just seems so scary. You know what? I'm not even going to work with it. But, but again, if I was really bent on joining a, starting a pharmaceutical company, the, the quickest thing I would do is how do I pay down my ignorance debt? How do I pay down that debt as quickly as possible? Do I need to write a check? Do I need to hire a lawyer? Do I need to pay someone that's been in the industry for 20 years? I'll pay them a $500,000 salary just to pay down my ignorance debt because every year that goes by, last year, for example, this is one way to look at ignorance debt. Uh, if, if, uh, if our goal is to make a million dollars a year, by the way, I've done that now a couple times. It's been pretty fun. Um, but before that, you know, I, I made like $235,000 in a year one time. I was like, oh, that's pretty good. That's a good year. And then some mentor came to me. He's like, well, Bridger, um, yeah, that's cool and all. But like, did you know that, you know, because, of your ignorance, because you don't know how to make a million dollars a year, because you don't know how to do that, you left on the table $765,000 this year that you lost because you don't know how to make a million dollars a year. I was like, huh. He's like, you, every year that you don't know, don't make a million dollars a year, you don't learn the lessons to make a million dollars a year, you have ignorance debt. He goes, there are people that have been in business 20 years, but they've really been in business one year, 20 times. You know somebody like that? They've done, they've, oh yeah, I've been in business for 20 years, but they've repeated the same year, one year for 20 years versus someone who's been in business for five years, but every year for the five years, they've grown, they've learned new things, they've developed, they've had different years of learning years over five years. You know what I'm talking about? Is that making sense? Give me like a, like a, uh-huh in the chat. That's interesting. And so think about your last year or the year before that. Did you just repeat the same year? Yeah, I've been in business 23 years, but it's in the same year every year. Or have you been in business five years, but every year it's been a full new learning curve and you've developed and grow. That's why, you know, you see these people that are sort of in college. I, I, you know, I've met people that are 28 years old and they have more experience in an industry than someone that who is 45 years old. Because the 45-year-old has done this for 20 years, and the 28-year-old has done this for five years. And this 28-year-old literally has more experience than the 45-year-old because they have paid down their ignorance debt. One of the things I actively do, just I'm just saying personal bridger, and I think that's led to some success that I've had. We now run, you know, fund launches down to over $25 million in revenue. We have a $25 million hedge fund I currently run. I've had multiple years where I've, you know, we've made millions of dollars. It's been really cool to be a part of. And I will hopefully it keeps going. It could all crash and burn, I guess, but we've been very blessed in God and, and has helped us a ton. And it's just been amazing. But something that I've actively done to go out and for, you know, some of you guys know my story, but I started six businesses my first two years of college and they did okay. And I, but I learned a ton. I feel like I paid down a lot of ignorance debt. And I also joined a lot of groups. I paid for courses and communities and coaching, whatever it was. I paid one-on-one -on -one mentors whether it was with time or money or value to try to pay down ignorance debt as quickly as possible. That's why I love going to events. That's why I love getting in rooms where people are smarter than me. It sounds cliche, but they've learned lessons of business that I have not learned. And they can, maybe they can help me pay down my ignorance debt faster. And I believe what happened was the first six businesses did, did okay. We made like $5,000 per business. And then the seventh business we made, I think it was like 450,000. That was pretty good. 
Like I netted like 30% of that. I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. So I made like 150,000. I was like, dang. And I was in college at the time. I was like, shoot, that's awesome. And then the eighth business we started was like, was actually fun launch. And now we've done over 25 million in sales out of fun launch. Like, holy crap, you know? But I believe if I hadn't done the six businesses prior, done the paid down the internet says, I would have never launched fun launch to the degree it's at today. And then we launched our hedge fund. We raised a $10 million in our initial launch. And now we're up to 25 million. I don't think that ever would have happened unless I had paid down the ignorance debt prior. And maybe, hopefully, the next business we launch will be even 10 times bigger than that. I'm hopefully going to stay in the game and keep learning, okay? So back to, if you go to my iPad here, these, where am I at here? Getting in the room, joining these events, going to these things, paying, you might, man, it's just the runaround. Why am I doing this? Is to develop us. The most valuable real estate me and you own is between our ears. We can pay down this ignorance debt. That's why actually, I know I'm, I keep talking about Fun Launch Live, but the, one of the biggest reasons that I wanted to throw Fun Launch Live, this is our third event, was because I was such a, I was a beneficiary of other people who threw great events that allowed me to come. And I feel like I got a decade in a day. You've heard that from Tony Robbins? To turn decades into days, to compress things down. That's why, and, for, and then what I saw was, this helped me in marketing and business strategy and in self-development, I felt like I moved in three days. I moved my entire life forward like six months or eight months. I started to compress time. But then what, I, what we saw was there was nothing like this for people that wanted to launch funds. There was nothing out there that helped people go out and launch funds. And so we said, hey, what if we threw an event that allowed thousands of fund managers to come together and uh, and launch funds? And that's what we threw. Fund launch number one in Las Vegas. We had 12 more people show up live. We sold out the entire event. It was incredible. We then threw Fund Live two in Miami, Florida. Had 2,000 people. Some of the pictures you see here was from last year. It was incredible. And then now we're throwing Fund Live number three. And this one's going to actually be I think, above and beyond the previous events. We are restructuring this event to get tons of nuggets and value to just move the audience to truly make it a decade in a day or a decade in three days. Um, I think it's a massive way to condense time, to immerse yourself, to be all in on something. I'll actually share it, another story. Um, is this helpful, by the way? Sorry, I'm, I'm like, you guys got me on a tangent here, like squirrel. Is this good? Give me a, give me like a booyah in the chat. <laughs> booyah. Give me a booyah in the chat if you, if that, if this is kind of making sense, why I, I care so much about this. I'll share a different story. So, um, uh, give me a iPad for me. So here we are. Okay, I want to share a story about, uh, a guy named Stephen Schwartzman. So, so Stephen, Sh how do you spell Schwartzman? Schwartzman. Okay, I just scribbled through there. As you can tell, I'm, I, my team always makes fun of me for spelling. Um, I would challenge you to spell correctly in front of you know 500 people live at any given time. All right, that's my challenge. <laughs> Stephen Schwartzman. I'm a little dyslexic as well, but maybe that. I don't know. Anyways, Stephen Schwartzman. Anybody know who Stephen Schwartzman is in the chat? Who is Stephen Schwartzman? Hopefully you would know. Yeah, Schwartzman. Thank you for spelling that correctly. But Schwartzman, we'll just leave it like this. Steven Schwartzman is the co-founder of Blackstone. Now, if you don't know who Blackstone is, Blackstone pretty much runs the world. Okay, Blackstone is one of the largest private equity family of funds in the world. I think the last I checked, they managed something like six hundred billion dollars between all their portfolios. I mean, Blackstone owns. We can go on their portfolio. We won't right now, but they own like half of the Las Vegas Strip. They own a lot of the apartment complexes that people live in. They own, they own Ancestry.com. They own, I mean, you can go across the board. Companies that are backed by Blackstone is insane. I mean, they, they if you look at the true ownership structure of, of who owns the world, Blackstone is one of the top groups ever. So anyways, Stephen Schwartzman is one of the founders of Blackstone. His book is fascinating, really cool. Their first fund ever, they raised a billion dollars on their first fund. How cool is that? I think it was in his, in his early 30s. It was just really cool to, to hear that. So he's got a story he was telling. And, he, and so he's done a lot of work in China and Asia. And he wanted to speak um, Mandarin Chinese. Okay, so he wanted to speak a little Mandarin. Um, I speak. I, I served a, a church mission in Taiwan, by the way, for two years. Loved it to death. It was amazing. Um, so I speak a, a, some Mandarin. I, I'm pretty decent at it. So he wanted to learn Mandarin Chinese. So what he did, he's like, okay, I'm going to hire a tutor. This is what most people would do. Right? I'm going to hire a tutor. I'm going to do once a week lessons. I'm going to have a tutor come to my house. We're going to spend an hour, hour and a half, you know, doing this. Okay. So he does this for a year, right? For one year, he does this 12 months. That's a lot of time to dedicate to learning a language. He has a school that he sponsored in China. So he flies out to China. Okay. He goes out there to his school. He gets there and he wants to practice his Mandarin. So he gets out there. He starts talking to people. 
And what he realizes, the students, there was international students that came from America, just barely. The students that have been there for two weeks already had way better Mandarin than he had. And he was pretty depressed. He was like, what, like, what is this? Am I just old? Right? Am, I, am I dumb? Can I not learn quickly? Like, why is my Mandarin so terrible? He's a billionaire. This guy spent, got the best tutor, spent a year doing this. Like, man, is Chinese just really hard? Like, what is going on? And then he realized something interesting. He goes, huh, well, okay, for the last year, I've spent about an hour a week. So that's about 52 hours I've spent learning Mandarin. These students that have been here for two weeks, they've already spent 80 to 100 hours studying Mandarin and being immersed in the culture. He was like, huh. In two weeks, they progressed further than I progressed in a year. And he goes, well, no wonder they have better Mandarin than me. Huh. Now, I think this is very true for our businesses. I have a, fr- I have a couple of friends that have wanted to launch a business for two years. Anybody else have somebody like this in their life, a family member, a brother-in-law? Three years they've been talking about doing a business. Oh, yeah, we're going to build this restaurant. We're going to do this cool thing. We're going to build a barber shop. Anybody? Am I the only one? Type a yes in the chat. That's you. You know somebody? Maybe it's you. I've done this before. What I like to call this this type of, you know, personality is a wantrapreneur. They want to be entrepreneurs. They like talking about it. They like reading the books. They like wanting to be an entrepreneur, but they're not an actual entrepreneur. I would venture to guess, take any of your your friends friends that are working on, on, you know, I have a friend, he's working on a business for two years. If me and you sat down this weekend, today's what's today's Tuesday. If we spent Tuesday to Saturday, And all we did was work on the exact same business. I bet me and you would get further in four days than they've gotten in two years. Because we're going to go all out. We're going to spend 15 hours a day. All we're going to do, eat, sleep, and drink is just do this. We're going to dive all in in four days. I'd venture to guess we might might get further than somebody's gotten in two years. Because what these two-year people do is they have a Zoom call with their business partners. Okay, let's have some assignments. And then two weeks later, they meet back up. Hey, how'd everyone do? Oh, I forgot to do it. I had busy. My daughter had a birthday party. It's the holidays. Okay, yeah, let's get back together. Let's do it again. Okay, another two weeks goes by. Okay, how are we doing on, okay, do we get the logos done? How's the website built? Okay, yeah, okay. Can we get that done? Okay, great. Another two weeks goes by and they dabble and dabble and dabble and never nothing ever gets done. If we go all in and are immersed, it's crazy what you can do in a short condensed period of time. I had a, I had a professor at, in university tell me this exact story right here. He said, Bridger, any business you're doing, you can vet out in three weeks with 500 bucks. If you go all in for three weeks on something, you can fully vet this business, see if it's a good business or badness, and you'll know if you need to do it with three weeks and 500 bucks. And prior to this, this is during those six businesses, I was kind of dabbling through stuff. I was kind of doing this. I was, I was kind of doing the entrepreneur stuff. I'd work on stuff on the side on the weekends, you know, kind of working on stuff. And finally I said, screw it. Like I'm all in. So I grabbed Mason, my business partner. I'm like, dude, I've got this idea. We could launch a business where we could help people like learn about investment funds. What do you think? So yeah, it's a cool idea. We didn't build a logo. We didn't even come up with a name. All we did, we went out and launched a bunch of ads on social media. We spent 500 bucks on ads. We sent them to a landing page and we had a little checkout page just to see if people would purchase, like a, we were going to sell this a, a course on funds for $47 was our idea. Like, let's just see if people would buy. Let's just see if people will click on the advertisements. Let's see what our click-through rate is. Let's see what our opt-in rate is. See if we can get some emails, Right. Our first weekend, so we spent, we just went all in. We're like, okay, we're just going to do this. We're All we're going to think about for the next like week is just do this. We went all in. We spent 500 bucks on ads the first weekend. Get this. We made back around $1,800 off of about $500 in ad spend. We we're like, shoot, people like this. But guess what? We didn't even build a product. What we did, by the way, we just said, hey, if you bought it, bought it you know what? We're just going to give you a refund. <laughs> we just refunded. We said, hey, we'll give you a refund. Or if you want to stay, we can, you know, we're going to build this thing over the next like three months. Uh, You can stay and we'll give it to you in three months. But really, we just want to see if you'd buy, take a full refund. No questions asked, just have a refund. We actually on the next page gave people refunds. 
Um, (laughs) Because we wanted to see if people would buy. Right? Instead of worrying about a logo and a name and all the stuff, we just started to launch and just to move. What happened was this thing took off like wildfire. We actually built this whole product in about two weeks. And what's, you know, what's fun is building a product when there's money coming in the door. It's really fun to build a product. Everyone's on board. Everyone's motivated. Everyone's there. We now built this thing. The next month, we did about $80,000 in sales in one month. Isn't that crazy? Over the next, uh, about eight months later, we'd already done a million dollars in sales. Over the, the following, like it was around 12 months, we did 2.5 million in sales. And this is actually what became Fun Launch. We then, um, we grew the next year. I think we did like 4.5 million. The next year we did like 9.5 and we just did 11 something million, something like that. So. All right. Oh, stop sharing that. But yeah, that is what I want to be doing. That's the vision for the National Tax Strategy Education Program is a show like that where we have guests from all sorts of different areas in life they're sharing what they do how they teach people how they help people and the goal is to get my followers to follow them my followers to buy from them and learn from them rather than me creating more products, me creating more courses, selling courses or anything like that. I become the conduit uh, between the audience and the course. And that's what I believe uh, our tax system should be. It should be the conduit between the teachers and the students throughout time. So, That is what I'm working on accomplishing, showing people as as we move through time. And you can see everything's all set up. Everything works. Where I'm at right now is personally, I need to take care of my family. I gotta find a W-2 job that is going to provide for my family that also understands the benefit they get from being part of this system, the benefit they get from the marketing and the blog and everything we're doing for everyone else also drives attention back to them. So that is, that's where I'm at right now. Uh, the, I mean, ideally, We get enough revenue running into America's holding company. I can get a W-2 job straight from America's holding company. And this is my focus. Um, Actually, that is not ideal because my wife would really like the security of a W-2 job working with someone else and me getting out and being around other people. So that is, I would like to do this full time, but right now it's not the right choice for me or my family. So that's why I'm trying to sell the class A shares and control of this whole system to someone who can manage and run it and I can be a client of it and just focus on my family because that's what my family needs from me right now. So that is a fun update for you on life and what we're working on and the blog and everything. At the end of the day though, it's not about what I do. It's about what we do as a community. And that's why this whole system works. Right now, it is solely based on what I do because I haven't figured out how to explain and show people the way this system works. But once once we figure that out, I think we're gonna move really fast. Once people start seeing the compounding nature of time 
and how we're adding the value of our time in the real world together to create this asset. That's my belief, at least. <laughs> Anyways, have a great day, guys.